Hi, chemistry students. Let's talk about the relationship between K sub C and K sub P for the same reaction. Uh, and we'll be speaking particularly about a reaction where everything's in the gas phase that's part of our equilibrium expression. Uh, that way, the pressure and the concentration make sense when we look at them together. So, uh, start off with just a simple, a simple uh, reaction of A plus 2B in equilibrium with AB2. All of these are in the gas phase. So we can look at the equilibrium expression in, form, in, in, in the form of the K sub P, here looking at pressures, partial pressures, and here we get our K sub P expression. And then we can also look at it in terms of the concentrations and get our K sub C. And right now they're not, they're not necessarily the same value in terms of K sub P if it's 12, uh, is K sub C 12. It's possible, but it's, it's likely that it's different. So let's find out the whole relationship between them real quick, and there'll be a very simple equation at the end to, I guess, memorize if you'd like, and uh, use to make this conversion anytime you feel you need to. So from the ideal gas law, there's something that we know, and that is PV equals NRT. So what we can do is we can rearrange this to get N over V, which is moles per liter. Once again, moles per liter, that's molarity, and that's equal to P over RT. So what we see here is that the molarity of our substance is related to the partial pressure of that substance, in this case I've called it X, and divided by the RT uh, term here, the available thermal energy. We can rearrange that if we want and say that the partial pressure is actually equal to the concentration times RT. Just a little simplification for our, uh, our little viewing pleasure here. So if we take our K sub P from our previous example, we can see that it's going to be P of AB divided by PA divided by, uh, and PB, P sub B squared. Let's substitute in for every pressure for P sub AB, we'll substitute in the concentration of AB times RT. Same thing for P sub A, A times RT. And we have to re remember that for B, both of these things, the whole term, the concentration of B times RT gets squared. That's what we see here. If I kind of separate out the concentration aspect and the RTs, I get something that looks like this. I get AB over the concentration of A and divided by the concentration of B squared, which, if you think about it, is just K sub C. And then I have this whole big mess of RTs, and these guys cancel out. And I'm left with 1 over RT squared, which is RT to the minus 2. So that's fine and dandy. We know how to do it for this one. But why do we need to go through this whole mess every time? Let's instead look at a generic reaction. And maybe it will give us the ability to go forward and get an actual equation that works for us. So here's a generic reaction uh, where A is the stoichiometric coefficient of the substance A. And little, lowercase b is the stoichiometric coefficient of the substance B, we could write the case of P again. That's going to be the pressure of B raised to the B divided by the pressure of A raised to its stoichiometric coefficient A. Very simple reaction, very simple relationship here. But if we recall, we can immediately substitute in that this is going to be the concentration of B raised to the B power times RT raised to the B power, and then the denominator becomes the concentration of A to the A power and RT to the A power. What we get from this, if we separate this out, we get B to the B over A to the A, which is once again just the case of C, but then we get RT this whole quantity raised to the power of B minus A. And if we look carefully, B minus A is equal to what we can call delta N, where N is the stoichiometric moles of gas. So what we find is K sub P is equal to K sub C times RT to the delta N. And now we've got an expression 
k sub p is equal to k sub c times rt to the delta m. And remember, delta m is going to be the number of moles of product in the gaseous form minus the number of moles of reactant. So if our reaction was 3A gas in equilibrium with B gas, then our delta N would be equal to 1 minus 3 equals minus 2. So right here is our 3 that's in there. Right here is the stoichiometric coefficient 1, which we don't write. And we end up with a very simple relationship here that will allow us to compute K sub P from K sub C or vice versa for a gaseous, uh, gaseous equilibrium system.